When I found out there was like a kid's version of Chronicles of Crime, I got super hyped and me and my son went through all six missions in Quest for the Moonstones. Let's talk about it. What does that even mean, Bowers Game? Hi there, YouTube. We're back again today for another game review, another special tag team review. I'm here with my seven-year-old son, Luke, and Hola. we just got done with the quest for the Moonstones from Lucky Duck Kids. This is for ages seven plus. It's for one to four players, and it's for 30 to 45 minutes, and Luke is seven years old, in case you're wondering. And so, in this game, how it's going to work is you are going to need to have their app on your phone. I believe, I don't, uh, you probably get it on maybe on like an iPad, too, but you're going to be using this for a couple different things. We'll get into that. So, to start off, you're going to have this mission that you go on where you just kind of learn about the basics of the game kind of like a tutorial and honestly you don't have to really read much rules in this uh the app for the most part walks you through it and you get this little cat and this cat's going to help you now if you played chronicles of crime i really enjoy that game and this game is very similar but chronicles of crime is really difficult sometimes and this cat makes it so that everything nothing's ever too complicated in this game wouldn't you agree with this cat so we'll talk a little bit about them later. So essentially, you're going to play as these apprentice magicians for Merlin here. And you're going to have this board right here. And you're going to be walking around this board. And you can see that there's QR codes on this board. And when you want to walk from point A to point B, you scan the QR code. You walk over there. And then the app comes into play because it'll say, all right, who's, you know, whoever's going to be looking at the app is now going to take the app. And they're going to be, you know, moving it around. And it's kind of like you're in the middle of the picture. And you can kind of see, you know, what's going on. And what you're trying to do is look for people, which will be these cards right here, once again with QR codes. Uh, and objects, which are these smaller cards right here. And when you find objects, you're going to put them into your backpacks. And essentially what you're going to do is you're going to be going around all these different locations, trying to explore and figure out a mystery that Merlin will give you. So each of the episodes is going to be its own bite-sized little chunk, but they all end up connecting in the end with the, uh, with the final mission, which ends up being like longer than the other ones. And also, one thing I want to mention is, boom, double-sided board. So you will be using different sides of the board, which gives you different locations, different characters you interact with. And, and the gist is, essentially, is you scan a character to interact with them, and then they talk to you through the app. Now, you do have to read it. It's not voice narrated. Uh, and, and you'll have things in your backpack. So you might be, like, talking to this this dude with his dog about the boots, you know, this mushroom, and say, hey, what's this mushroom doing? You might be like, oh, that mushroom puts you to sleep or something. And then later on in the adventure, you might need to put something to sleep so you use the mushrooms to put them to sleep and it's all done through the app and on the board and that's the basic gist of the game each of the missions lasts about 30 to 45 minutes but this is more of the review i'm sure there's some gameplays of this one out there and i'm going to start and lead off with luke because obviously this game is catered not to me but to you so what did you think about the quest for the moonstones uh i really liked it i would if i could get so, five, ten stars. So, ten, you're saying this is a ten out of ten? Yeah. Is this your favorite game that you've ever played? No. Is it up there, though? Yes. Okay, so what did you love about the game? Uh, I liked how the adventures connect. Yeah, Dude. that's always really cool when it's like, oh, I know this character. We had we had, we had a run in with this character before. We did this before, and, and that's really really neat as well. I feel like you also really enjoyed uh, looking at all the different locations, right? Yeah. Was that uh, was that exciting? Stressful? A little bit of both? Like what what what, what was that like? Because I didn't do that at all. It was pretty much all Luke in charge of that one. I like the girl that we found out that she was in there. Well, you, let's not give them any spoilers. But yes, each of the stories definitely feels different. You're doing different things. You're talking to different people about different items. Uh, there's some cool. There's some definite cool moments in this story. And and honestly, let's we're just gonna lump together the pros and cons on the review because I'll be honest with you as well. I think if you're looking at this for kids ages six to ten, you think that's about the right range? Maybe eleven ish. Six to probably like twelve. I mean, I think a ten? lot. Of, yeah, I think ten, Sean, eleven. Sean could probably definitely do this on his own. 
That's a, he has played it on his own. Like, and that's one thing I want to mention. So I think if your kids are between the age of, say, 6 to 11 or 12, I think this is really, really going to hit well. But I do want to put one huge asterisk on this. It says it's one to four players. I don't think I'd want to play this three or four players. Because right now, two players feels like kind of perfect. He looks around. I'm going through these cards like, oh, what'd you find? You saw boots. And so I'm looking through the cards for the boots. And I think, though, if you have three or four people, there just wouldn't be enough to do in the game. What do you think about that? Because essentially, if there was someone else here, you would be taking turns with that person looking through the thing, which means you'd just be... Three people is perfect, because one could look around, one could do that, and one could do that. Okay. I will say, though, I feel like this is kind of a one-person job, but yeah. But four, would you agree four is probably a bit too much? Uh, yeah. Yeah, so I think but four... one to read! One to read. Okay, well, you... You, you're, you're, oh, you're right. I personally still think one or two is going to be the sweet spot here. Let me know in the comments below on that one. Um, nothing was too terribly difficult to figure out. The app worked really well. We didn't have any issues with it. I mean, slight nitpick. I'd love to see narration on that thing. I think that really would have went a long way. Yeah, just period. I think narration would have been great on this. Uh, but as long as you have someone who can read... Uh, this is great, and I think, as Luke said, I think this is a great solo game for younger kids as well, as long, especially if they have their own device that they can get the app on. Uh, and I, and we're excited because there's, I feel like we kind of are taking off the training wheels, and I feel like the more this game grows, the more cool stuff you're going to be able to do. Like, I definitely feel like some of the stuff we were doing in the last mission was the coolest. And we don't want to talk about exactly what it was, but essentially you're becoming a, magi ma a magical apprentice, and you're gaining more magical powers as you progress. And so I'd love to see this continue. And there's actually uh, two more missions that you can download for eight bucks. So maybe we'll do that another time and, and do a video on those ones. But end of the day, you're at a 10 out of 10. This is one of your favorite games of all time. Okay. Was there anything you didn't like? Because um, 10 out of 10, that's, that's the tippy top of the mountain. I did not... I... It's okay to say no, too. No. No, you loved it? Yeah. Well, just so you know, this has a lot of surprises. It does, but that's a good thing, right? Yeah. You see, like... What? Hey, the... I've seen him, and, and now he's in the last adventure. Yeah, yeah, that's always cool. You're like, oh, hey, we interacted with you before. Yeah. So, Quest for the Moonstones, I am not quite a 10 out of 10, but I definitely think that this is um, great, and I think it's... I, here's the other thing. I don't think I don't think you'd enjoy it as much going through it a second time, though. You know everything, right? You pretty much know exactly what to do. Yeah. Uh, so, keep on the trail. The sidewalk. Oh, that is a little bit annoying, too, where... Yeah, I do want to mention that. It's a little bit of a nitpick. Where So if you're at the very top of the map, you can't just click on the location at the bottom of the map, scan the QR code. It's like, oh, you have to go through here to go through there to go through here, which makes logical sense. But at the end of the day, it just it, it feels a little bit tedious. Like when I, I know I need to go to the port, but then I have to click on two, you know, a location or two before I can get to the port. But minor nitpicks and what is otherwise a fantastic children's uh, children's game, I'd say once again, up to two players. And um, do I slap a Bowers Best Sale on this? Do I like it that much? I'm not quite there. Because once again, I, I don't think the replayability is here. I don't think that going back through this, we would have nearly as much fun. Do you? No, because we know everything. Yeah. yeah. But going through new stuff, absolutely. So at the end of the day, I, I, I'm not quite a 10, but I'm still definitely like an 8.5, 8.7. I think this is a great family experience that you definitely want to check out that's the quest for the moonstones for lucky enough kids if it looks like it might be a cup of tea be sure to check out that amazon link down below also in the comments below let me know if you could have this game but set anywhere what kind of setting would you want it do you want it to be vikings do you want it to be you know rangers do you want to be a uh, sheep i mean what 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 would you what theme would you love with this system because i think it's a very very cool system and i do think kitties kitties be kitties doing adventures that'd be nice that'd be nice i'm gonna go with i want to be running 
a haunted water park. That sounds cool. Wait, so, so on the front of the box, hashtag kitties. There is. There's also meals. You'll get your cat meals. We like meals a lot. But as always, thanks for your time, YouTube. This video is brought to you by all of my amazing Patreon supporters, and I would love it if you would join their ranks and have your name immortalized in the end of many of my videos for the end of time. But consider for only a dollar a month, and as always, thanks for stopping by.